My name is Lena Gustafsson. I work with Swedish uh, University of Agricultural Sciences in Uppsala in Sweden. And I'm a professor in conservation biology, so I'm a researcher. Um, my view on integrated forest management is that it's a nature conservation focus, biodiversity focus. It's about um, adjusting the harvest operations to also think about what is left behind and not only what is taken out. So it's a relatively new forest model to give increased emphasis on native conservation in managed forests. My name is Uwe Schörmich. I'm the head of the forest office in the region of Köln-Bonn and the surrounding. Integrated forestry means for me that all functions of the forest, wood production, recreational needs and um, protection of natural resources are in the focus of the forest owners and the foresters at all times. And in the region of Kalmbon it's mostly the function of recreation. We have to consider uh, the recreation when we work in the forests. And I think the best solution for uh, me is to develop a stable forest with mixed species and different ages on every side. My name is uh, Marie Mouget. I'm uh, working at ADEM, it's a policy and environmental policy consultancy in Berlin, Germany. I am uh, working on uh, forest policy and environmental policy, um, yes, uh, focusing on also agroforestry, forestry, for instance, or other topics like natural protection. Um, I would like to answer the question, how, what is integrated forest management to me? And to me, is integrated forest management uh, an interesting mean to, to build a bridge between science, um, policy and practice? and to try to achieve a real interdisciplinary dialogue between actors and across sectors too. It is not something uh, totally new, but it's something that still needs to be pushed forward. And I think also that um, it can be a good mean to improve the weaknesses of the so-called science policy practice interface. And I think that the integrates uh, uh, project and the informal project uh, can be a good instrument maybe to achieve this goal. My name is uh, Mons Kroll. I'm from the Danish Nature Agency, which is uh, managing state forests in, in Denmark. And we are very keen on collaboration in this European integrated network. Uh, integrating forest management is as, as I see it very much trying to get scientific basis into the management of in, in, into our forest management that is always uh, that is already very inter integrative we have a lot of concerns we and a lot of interest we have to uh, work with but integrated integrated uh, management in this sense is biodiversity knowledge how, how can we actually utilize or operationalize the scientific knowledge, uh, especially on biodiversity and, and uh, structures and forests. Uh, take the example of the micro, micro habitat catalog, it's a very useful tool in, in, in that sense, transferring knowledge from scientific to practitioners. So, so this linkage between between uh, science and practitioners is a very important linkage for us. Uh, of course, there's also a linkage to, to politics, but as state foresters, we have others doing the politics. <laughs>
uh, the species can migrate if you remain with habitat trees, uh, with dead wood and so on. For sure they live inside, but if there is a need for migration because of climate change, you, you provide the habitats. So the connectivity is given and that is very important to adapt to climate change. Um, that's the first point. The second point is um, if you have a, a best practice of integrated forest management, you have more stock um, in the forest, so you increase the carbon sequestration in the, within the forest and this is a long-term storage. Um, or compared to normal wood products, it's longer to store carbon inside the forest. As you know, most products are um, short term in the wood production. So more than 50 up to 60 percent uh, is used immediately or in the next one to three years. And so they release the carbon uh, once again after the use of the product. And so if you remain with, for, uh, with trees in the forest, it helps uh, to combat climate um, change. And the last point is um, um, when you have a certain adaptation on the civic culture um, methods uh, according to integrated forest management, you can maintain um, the, the inner climate of the forest and that really helps a lot to um, mitigate the effects of climate change. Because if you have a um, higher uh, tree density with a higher farm canopy and we have a lot of measurements uh, from science that humidity, especially in the temperate zone but also in the boreal zone, Humidity is uh, higher and uh, the impact of climate change is mitigated by that. And we have studies from Italy, for example, that if you change the silviculture methods a little bit more, uh, then, then you can um, mitigate the, the climate change you already pr practice. Uh, so uh, one to two degree uh, increase uh, can mainly mitigated, not everywhere, not on all site conditions, for sure not. But in, in a lot of places, uh, you can mitigate the climate change by this silviculture method. I'm Lydia Zapponi, I'm an ecologist and I work in Italy for the National Center for the Study and Conservation of Forest Biodiversity of Bosco Fontana. And I believe that integrated management is a very promising way to ensure that we have a flexible methods of managing an ecosystem because it is the flexibility which will ensure us not to reach exploitation levels that would compromise biodiversity and thus we will definitely compromise the resilience of the system which is the key to react to climate change. My name is uh, Tomasz Kaiser and uh, I'm uh, the director of uh, the Department of Polis Forest Policy and Economy at the Ministry of Agriculture of the Czech Republic. So literally I, I will touch the issue of forest policy and uh, how forest policy can help uh, developing uh, uh, integrated uh, forest management or integration of uh, biodiversity enhancement into, into forest management. And I think that the most important uh, issue is to persuade uh, forest owners, uh, starting from state forest owners, uh, continuing with uh, other public forest owners, and uh, finishing with, uh, with private forest owners to, to take this approach. And uh, it can be done uh, mostly by developing uh, advisory uh, services and also supporting uh, uh, this development by, by, uh, uh, by introducing uh, subsidy schemes like payments uh, uh, for ecosystem services because uh, biodiversity enhancement uh, is in fact uh, ecosystem service. And in this uh, uh, case uh, uh, we can learn from our telescopes and uh, to use uh, knowledge from them uh, to develop those schemes.